Yeah, the brother's asking a question. It's interesting what you said at the end. He said that many people who are born Muslims believe that it's enough, the fact that he is Muslim, that one day he will go to Jannah. Even if he's punished a bit, eventually he's going to go there, so it doesn't really matter if he prays and does good things anyways. And this is the aqidah of irja, which is the murjia who believe, khalas, as long as you believe, you're going to Jannah. And something interesting that he said, he said, just like the Christians believe, in their belief. And it's the same exact belief that the Christians have. And if you say, if you believe in Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, then do what you want at the end. Huh? As long as you believe, you're going to go to Jannah. And the same thing that some of these people believe, as some of the Muslims believe, as long as I say the kalima of la ilaha illallah, that one day, eventually, I'm going to Jannah as well. And this is, any, any, as some of the scholars, when they were asked, isn't la ilaha illallah the miftah, the key to Jannah? He said, yes, but every key has what? It has the ridges on it or the teeth on it, right? If you don't have the correct ridges, it's not going to open the door. So, and it's not just that you have to know la ilaha illallah, understand what la ilaha illallah means, know the conditions of la ilaha illallah, and then you have to implement them. And some of the conditions that are, or, or, or that for us to benefit from our Islam is the issue of the prayer. The Prophet ﷺ, he made it clear, this is the covenant between us and them, the salat. So whoever leaves it has committed an act of kufr. This is serious. It's the amud, the backbone of the religion. All of this stuff is for us to reflect. So it's not just enough. And from our iman, the true belief in iman as Muslims, is that iman is made up of three components. It's made up of three components. First of all is the belief in the heart. And then the testimony on the tongue and the actions which come and the statements. And then the actions themselves. All of these are from Iman. So it's not just enough to believe in your heart. You actually have to come up and show in your actions. And then subhanAllah when it comes to taking the risk. If I were to say to you now, and la qadrullah, may Allah forbid, but let's say there was a fire in the back. And the whole backside is on fire. Now we have two options in front of us are three options. Some of the strong guys like Sheikh Muhammad can try to break the cement and go out from this window here. And the time of fear, you might be able to do that actually. Or we can run through the fire and take our chances. Maybe we'll make it out. Maybe we'll get a half burnt. Maybe we'll make it out. Or we can just use the back door if there was a back door. And let's say there was. We could go out the back door. Or the window and say, let's open the door. Did the fire escape? We'll go out there. So some brothers say, I'm going to take my chances going out through the fire. Who, who, who would take their chance and go out in the fire in the back? Let's, let's say that we have a back door here, wide open, no problem. And there's a fire all in the back. Who would take the chance and go in the back? So want to be manly, huh? huh? We say super die now until we have super Muslim now. Huh? We want you to just run through the fire. No, nobody would take the chance. And the fire of the hereafter, is it like the fire of, 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 of this world? 70% hotter. And the punishment in it is more severe. But yet we take the chance. We gamble when it comes to the fire of the hereafter. And so who, who would want to take the chance of going to the hellfire? This is something, it, it doesn't make sense in the affairs of, of this world. So why do we take the chance when it comes to the issue of the hereafter where it's going to be even more severe? Allah Mustafa.